Hiya folks, and welcome back for more Let's Play Back to the Future, Episode 1. If you recall, we had managed to figure out where we can find some alcohol fairly readily available, but not quite how to get our hands on it yet. I mean, yeah, sure, Edna comes in and picks up barrels and distributes it out to the needy, but they seem to keep those fairly well uh, separated so she wouldn't be given a bottle of the uh, alcohol by accident. And our one attempt to uh, knock it off of that cart and onto the table uh, had this roll bar had barrels roll back down under the place and roll under the table and down into the uh, elevator there. So. If we could get these tables stacked and braced up against the uh, this table, then, you know... What are those tables for? We keep a few extra tables around for our end-of-the-month hobo soirees. Could you move them out of the way? Not a chance. I could throw out my back. Hmm. Well... Let's see if... He has Huddle up, Emmett. Say. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. All right, I think I figured out which barrels have the hooch. Then what are you waiting for? He's not just going to give me a barrel. Of course. Well, you seem to have a way with people, so I'll leave it up to you to trick that lummox into giving up his moonshine. Emmett, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no, of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, it's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. Hmm. Let's let him work. Eureka! And he's figured something out. You don't normally hear, Eureka. Yeah, once again, another shipment of alcohol is going to go downstairs. They have a lot of barrels of alcohol. Oops. Yeah, it looks like the door's propped open. Emmett. Yes? Oh, that's interesting. Just a little mechanical ingenuity. In the end, the door is open. Yeah, good job. Okay, so now we'll that score that hooch somehow. Up. I'll keep cogitating. Let's go take a look at here. Yep, the tables are all stacked up nice. So, we may have a way to roll these barrels. And get them over there. But before we do that... There's only one way we're getting our hands on a barrel. And that's if she comes in to pick oh, one up. Miss Strickland, come for some more soup? Come now, Mr. Donnelly. You know I wouldn't set one foot in this mockery of all that is good and decent if the poor of Hill Valley weren't so dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Was that a yes? Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. Hmm. Yep. He walks over there and grabs one I'll from tell the, the boss table. you said hello. I'll just bet you will. Hmm. Let's see, is she still out here? Yes, she is. Let's go talk to her. Because we could have her deliver that alcohol hey, uh, right Strickland. to us. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. If we play our cards Try right. not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. First, 
We need a place for the Stay Sober Society. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? Well, you could pick all these. But since we need the alcohol at Emmett Brown's house... The Brown residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett. And he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. The meeting isn't due to start for a little while, so that'll give our people some time to set up. So, now we have the Stay Sober Society that is going to meet at, um, Emmett Brown's house. As so a matter let's of get fact, some soup I do know a local them. charity that's running low on soup. Oh, who? We can have the Stay Sober Society. Stay Sober Society. Bless you for thinking of them. But that meeting isn't scheduled to start for a little while. And we wouldn't want them eating cold soup. Okay. So, it'll happen later. But not right now. We've still I got a couple book. things that we need to do before that will work. But that is how we will get the alcohol. Come on. Now that we have that set up... <laughs> and still, a bowl of crummy soup. I still think the soup needs more flavor. He didn't even give this the choice, he just goes and does it himself. And now that we have the backstop applied to the end of the table... Ta-da! The barrels end up on the end of the more table. soup? Please. And tell Kid that soup or no soup, he's not fooling anyone. And they picked up the barrel of hooch. Now all you have to do is to get it from her somehow. Yep. And that is all we need to do in the soup kitchen. I think now, if not now, we'll have to talk to her after we deal hey, uh, with Ms. the Strickland. subpoena. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Server Society is due to begin very soon. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? Yep. The Stay Sober Society. <laughs> That's right! They'll soon be gathering at the Brown Estate, and we haven't provided refreshments. I can't get over the generosity of your friend Emmett, volunteering his father's house for our meeting. <laughs> Wait there! Harry! What in the name of Thomas Alva Edison do you think you're doing? Don't you get it? You need alcohol to run your drill, right? Those bootleggers at the soup kitchen won't let us get our hands on any of their hooch, but we can get Miss Strickland to pick it up for us and deliver it right to your door. No, out of the question. Why? I can't just let strangers invade my parents' house. What do we know about these people? Mm, they're friendly. They're a bunch of really great guys. We don't know that. They're really polite. We don't know that. They're sober. It says so right in the name. Well, okay, but a pop needs his peace and quiet at the end of the day. This meeting is sure to be too noisy for him. So get your dad a pair of earplugs. I can't tell my father to wear earplugs. Hmm. What's wrong with a little noise? It'll be like a party. My pop is not the partying type. They'll be quiet. You'll be quiet, right? Oh, yes. I play my tambourine very softly. Tambourine? You hear that? Yes, but... But what? But it's still impossible. But I promised Miss Strickland. It means so much to her. 
The answer is still no. The thing of the Stay Sober Society, what'll happen to them? They can all fall off the wagon for all I care. Hmm. Okay, forget the whole thing. We don't have to test your rocket power drill tonight. We don't? No. I'll take the train back to Washington and I'll tell the folks at the office to give the patent to Dr. McCoy. Wait! <laughs> You will instruct the members of the society to wipe their feet before they come inside. Then you are, Emmett Brown. I thought as much. You have such a righteous face. Hmm. Edna Strickland, I don't know how to thank you for your generosity. Oh, um, uh, pleased to meet you. The feeling is mutual. Hmm. Interesting. I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Are you worry too much, Emmett? I now all we gotta do that. is serve that subpoena, and we're off to build your rocket drill. And get my patent. Yeah, your uh, patent. <laughs> so, there's only one person in this entire town that might be able to tell us where uh, Artie McFly is. Not likely that he's going to easily part with this information. Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes, or you got a death wish. Which is it? So, we have plenty of plenty of things to talk about. Edna Strickland thinks your soup kitchen might not be on the up and up. That dame gets on my nerves. Got a great pair of gams, though. Ah, you're so charming. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Since you're Arthur's boss, you know where he is, right? He's at the, uh, office. Where's the uh -huh. office? I forget. Since you're Arthur's boss, he's at the... Uh, where's the office? I forget. Hmm. So when do you think Arthur will be leaving the office? When I tell him he can leave the office. Hey, you missed a spot. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Hmm. Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? Could you keep your mind on your work, huh, shoeshine boy? I'm hanging on to my peanut bowl. Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead. Sure Knock you yourself are. out. But now... Hey, kid! Yeah? What the hell is that? <laughs> Every tannin falls for it. What'd you Except do? Except one. Oh. <clears throat> Give me that hat, you lousy crook! Damn it! a monkey out of Kid Tannen! <laughs> Ow! Fix me up! <laughs> Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out! Hmm. Well, with the hat secured, I do believe it is time to call this a video. When we come back, we'll go pay a visit to Artie McFly after we track him down. See you next time, folks. Take care, everyone.